Hello my darlings, my name is Brooke, and today I'd like to tell you about one of my goals for the summer. One quick order of business though before we move along. As you can see, my picture quality has improved. You know what that means? I now have a proper camera. So instead of me filming my vlogs last minute at 9.30 of night and editing on my phone, I now have a proper camera and I will hopefully have proper video editing software. So please be patient with me as I'm making this transition into actually doing this right. And thank you guys so much for continuing to stay with me. So at the two-year college I went to, there's this thing that's held on Saturdays that's called the Acting Gym. It's where we get to do workshops and play with scenes and basically learn all different aspects of acting and we get to do like, I've done a puppetry workshop there, I've done stage combat workshops there. It's a lot of fun and you learn a lot and you build a lot of different types of skills. And it's headed up by my head professor at that school, whose name is John Dodonna. He's wonderful. When I start doing vlogs of my internship, you'll hopefully get to meet him. And he had the group of us that were there this past Saturday work on making a list of goals that we wanted to achieve over the summer. A lot of the lists had to do with more performing stuff. I'll show you more of that when I actually start like taking classes that achieve those ends. But we are allowed to add stuff as the summer goes on. So for those of you who don't know, I'm actually a massive bookworm. I can't show you now because my room has all of my stuff from school just kind of spattered around in boxes, so it's kind of a mess. <laughs> and I'm allowed to know what a mess that is, but I'm not ready if I'm not sure if I'm ready to show the internet how much of a mess my room is. Um, but like behind the camera, I have like this low kind of end table bookshelf. And then over here, I have a big bookshelf. And between those two bookshelves and my Kindle, I own about 700 books all by myself. And I'm a big believer that children's novels and YA novels are some of the best books written. The books written from eight to 16 year olds. I love those books because I believe that those books, you're allowed to grapple with hard ideas, loss of a family member, the, you know, the pressures of growing up without being so dang depressing all the time, the way I've, a lot of adult novels I've read can be. And so I was at the library on Monday and I was on the low bookshelf in the YA section where they put all of the new releases. And they right now have the Florida Teen Reads list. And I have been in Barnes and Noble a couple of times since I've been back home and even before I left for sc left school for the summer. And a lot of the books I picked up that I liked, a lot of the YA novels, are on this list. So I checked out, I don't know how many of them that are on this list, there's 15. And I've decided that one of my goals for this summer is to read all 15 of these books before the summer is out. And as I finish them, I would like to review them for you because they're actually, the two I've read so far are actually really fun. So to start this project off, I'm going to talk about two books, the two I've read so far. And as we go along, I'm gonna make more individual vlogs for each book I read off the list. And the first book I read off the list was Learning to Swear in America by Katie Kennedy. And it's the story of this boy genius named Dr. Yuri Strelnikov from Russia. Basically, there's this asteroid hurtling toward Earth. It's the BR-1019. And it's hurtling towards Earth, and it, it's rather large. And if it comes and hits California, which, um, which is where Yuri is at, it will wipe out basically all of California. And so Yuri is trying to convince the other people on his team, there's 23 teams working together trying to figure out how to stop this asteroid from basically completely obliterating the entire west coast of the US. Um, and no one takes him seriously in his theor theories of antimatter, 
because he's just a kid and he hasn't fully been able to test and publish his results in using antimatter to basically obliterate parts of the asteroid. And while Yuri is doing this, he also runs into the daughter of one of the janitors, a girl named Dovey Column. And she basically inspires him to want to be just a normal teenager for a few weeks. And it's this very funny, very smart, very sweet book where Yuri has never had to really interact with anybody his age. He started college when he was 12. And one of his big goals, due to his frustration with his colleagues, is he wants to learn how to swear while he's in America. And I don't want to spoil anything because it's. But basically, something happens and now he has to find a way out of America. I can't tell you what it is, but it's kind of a big deal. But it, apparently, it's the author's debut novel. She has a son in high school and a daughter around my age, and she teaches history at um, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, is what it says here. It's closer to Wisconsin, is what it says. And for her first novel, it's actually really funny. She she studied Russian history, so she's very well versed in Russian lore and stuff like that. And Yuri, for being as smart as he is, the way a lot of genius characters are, there is this innocence about him. He's way too smart for his own good, and he doesn't know how to help himself. And I love... I like this story because it kind of reminds me of this Hayao Miyazaki quote where he says he writes stories where people mutually inspire each other to live. And I don't think he really does that for Dovey, but I think he, she does that for him. And I think those stories are important. We spend so much time wanting to be smarter than we are and wanting to grow up. And we don't know how much time we ever really have. And sometimes you have to be happy with who you are right now and live for who you are right now and I really like this book for that that's what I got out of it that's probably not what the author intended but as John Green says books belong to their readers <laughs> so the second book I read this summer was tell me three things by Julie Buxbaum and I read a book that was very similar in plot to this called Alex Approximately, and sorry to the author of Alex Approximately, but I liked this a lot better. <laughs> um, it's about this girl named Jessie Holmes, who two years prior had lost her mother, and she's still not over it, but her father met a woman in his bereavement group, and her name was Rachel, she's an actress in LA, and so he basically uproots Jessie from her life in Chicago and moves them out to LA where she has to deal with a stepbrother who doesn't seem to like her very much. His name's Theo, and he's perfect, because he's... He's a theater person in, like, every sense of the word, and it's fantastic. <laughs> I know plenty of Theos being a theater person myself. But they go to this high school, this rich kid high school, called Wood Valley High. Wood Valley High. Sorry, I know I'm not dictating very well. Um, but... Within Jessie's first week at school, she gets an email from this guy who calls himself Somebody Nobody, and he's trying to give her pointers to help her kind of navigate the school. And at first she kind of blows him off, but after she has a particularly terrible day, she consults his emails, makes friends with a girl who sits next to her in her English class whose name is Dree, and I love Dree. <laughs> um, and for an English assignment, she gets paired with this guy named Ethan, who is like, who has like flocks of girls around him at all times, but he kind of keeps them at a distance. And so they are paired together to do a project on The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. And he's the first person in two years, especially in LA, to really see her. And so she emails back and forth and starts instant messaging back and forth with somebody, nobody. She calls him SN for short. And she's trying to speculate who it is. And it's this very honest story about lasts and first and lost. Lasts and first and lost. And being, and being lost. And 
I finished this book last night. It's now Thursday. So I finished this book last night and I read a line to to my I not read a line, but I sent a line to my friends over Facebook message. And it just it resonated so hard with me because basically there's this guy who has a crush on her and she says that she feels like that guy makes her feel noticed but not really seen. And that's what she wants, is to be really seen and SN somebody nobody makes her feel seen and I think that resonates so hard with a lot of teenage girls and even me I'm 21 it resonates very much with me because I get that feeling of not truly feeling seen and I think it's just a really sweet honest book that if you want to understand that feeling of being invisible to everyone, really and truly, if you've forgotten what that feels like. I, I suggest tell me three things. And maybe find your own person to tell three things about yourself, the way Jesse and SN do. After doing this, this is actually something I'd like to continue doing. For the summer, I'm probably only, only going to review the books on the Teen Reads list. Um, and if I have the time, if I finish them in time, once I start getting really busy, I might start reviewing other books. But if y'all have any books you want me to review and if I have time, especially over the semester, I'm getting ready to go in my senior year of college, which is terrifying to me, by the way. Um, let me know and I'll be happy to read them. And if not, tell me what you think down in the comments forget to click like and subscribe. I have all my links down in the description and I hope you have a nice day darlings. I'll see you later.